Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for tonight's Village of Alsip board meeting. Today's February 19th, 2018. We'll call this meeting order at 7.30. we call the roll, please? Sure. Trustee McGreal? Here. Trustee Dalzell? Here. Trustee Pierce? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's start with officers' reports, starting with myself. Uh, just want to keep everyone informed that. Um, we're going to post on our bulletin board out in the hallway. I received a, a notice from um, Moraine Valley College for those interested. Moraine Valley's, uh, Moraine Valley's new CDL license program puts students in the driver's seat. Moraine Valley College is launching its commercial driver's license certification program. The college's two distinct offerings for a CDL basic license or a CDL plus are being offered in partnership with the professional truck driving school. CDL basic is a nine week program that provides standard CDL training and certification. The cost is $4,100. The 12 week CDL plus program, uh, which costs $4,600, includes a CDL basic content as well as a tanker hazardous material, and a double-triple endorsement. CDL Basic and CDL Plus classes start every month. Uh, persons considering a career in truck driving industry can learn more about Moraine Valley CDL programs at their upcoming open houses. They've got one at 6 o'clock p.m. this week, Thursday, February 22nd, and Thursday, March 15th, in Building M at the college's main campus, 9,000 West College Parkway in Palos Hills. Uh, also, I want to let everybody know I'm working on something right now with, uh, I'll get a picture over to all the trustees to, to show you as well then too. New Farm, uh, great company, it's been very generous here in, in the village as well. Uh, I was there for a meeting about two weeks ago with regard to the link and leverage uh, committee and um, Chuck Geraci, I don't think he's not here tonight, but he's our director of um, uh, emergency preparedness and we really are and I appreciate the board's help you know we increased the budget on that this year to help uh, obviously our civil defense that we, we should have in the community and New Farm is looking to donate a truck to us which is great they've got a 2011 Ford F-150 that they had from a lease it's in great condition I looked at it and we're going to get some paperwork going and so forth but I'm looking forward to this donation from New Farm uh, with a truck that we can utilize for that program then too because we, we that was obviously like in any budget uh, a vehicle is always a, a big chunk of it so looking forward to that. it's a nice white one and like I said this was a lease that they had it's in great condition it's parked at their at their business right now what else I have in here the um, Mike Freighter sent us all notice earlier today and uh, Mike I appreciate the notice that um, actually I'll leave this for you Mike do you have this one with you I don't want to stay I didn't have, I don't okay have any. Uh, we're going to be, uh, here, let me get this here, with your report. That's the uh, being a tree farm for the uh, USA. That's all I had with that. So, um, on to your agendas. Number one on your agenda, I'm going to pull that. Uh, I just spoke with uh, Attorney Joe Kankar before the meeting started. We're almost done with the model. Joe was, um, we were actually going to replicate language uh, to renew our 10-year franchise agreement with Comcast. Uh, every 10 years you renew your agreement with them. And um, Joe is actually introducing some new language to make the model a little more current. Comcast agreed they're okay with that, but we're not done with, with that language yet, so we might have it ready for our next board meeting. So for tonight, I'm going to pull that from the agenda, and uh, just indefinitely more or less until we're ready to have it approved. That would be letter A on the mm -hmm. consent agenda. The second item on the agenda was the approval of mayoral appointments. Uh, these are just some of the names of folks that work for our village who I've had a chance to evaluate over the last nine months. 
Um, some of the new hires or actually like uh, appointments, I've already appointed those folks, whether they were um, police chiefs, uh, deputy chiefs, mostly it was in the police department and our building commissioner. The ones, the names that remained were pretty much what you're looking at here this evening. So this would be uh, cl shown collectively as our DEP director, that's our director of emergency preparedness, Chuck Geraci, our part-time building inspector, John Justin, part-time electrical inspector, Brian Larman, the fire chief, Tom Szynski, deputy fire chief, Robert Ricker, fire prevention officers, Joe Schmidt and Doug Daniels, the health inspector, Linda Cavello, the superintendent of streets, Mike Freider, the finance director, Kent Alvin, the information technology uh, manager, Brian Massari, the superintendent of water and sewer, it would be Dan Tribin, and the water department foreman, Brian Jurasic. And we'll go to the clerk's report. Thank you, Mayor. I have the approval of the minutes for the November 6, 2017 Village Board meeting, the approval of the minutes of the November 13, 2017 committee meeting, minutes, the approval of the minutes for the December 20th, 2017 Village Board meeting, and the approval of the minutes for the December 4th, 2017 Village Board meeting. That is all, Mayor Ryan. Thank you. Madam the Clerk, I have one correction on the minutes for December 4th. Hang on one second. Let me pull them out. <laughs> okay. It's a really big correction here. No. <laughs> uh, December 4th, line 77. Okay. The header is listed as sewer and water and boat launch. <laughs> we will remove boat, boat launch. launch. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> I caught it on another one. I didn't catch it on that one. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have caught that. <laughs> uh, the attorney's report, we have Joe Kankar with us tonight. Uh, nothing individually. I'll chime in on specific items. Okay. Thank you. The engineer report, Well. And trailer tequila trip, okay. How's that going? I, I know we were, we had a couple of water main breaks, and we were here. We were, I was told it's really because, like Danny said, we we're kind of altering the the pavement over there, so we're kind of shaking up all the old pipes and so forth. Then, huh? Right. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh, standing. No, oh, I'm sorry. The public forum. Would anyone in the audience wish to address the board or anything? Come on, up, sir. You can go up to a mic, please, and just state your name. Hi. My name is Bob Waters, and I live at 11724 Kamensky, and uh, there's no street lights over there. I pay a lot of money in taxes, over $9,000, and I need some street lights. I'm the only one on my, to put my lights on and uh, my neighbor as well because it's so dark down there. If you want to go take a ride down there tonight, go ahead. There's a, there's a street light on the corner of 117th and Kamensky, and there's one on 118th, and there's none in the middle of the block. And go over on any other block, and there's three or four lights. My wife walks her dog at night, and, I, you know, I, don't, I just want to, you know, have some lights over there, you know. I, maybe you can look into this. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly look into it, Bob. The, um, uh, at, for what it's worth, I'm in uh, I'm in Hazel Green. I'm like 119th and Laverne behind Home Depot over there. I, we've got the same thing in our neighborhood. We got one in each corner. We got nothing in all the block. I'd be happy to take a look though and well, see if there's any kind well, of provision. That's you know? infrastructure, isn't it? It, it is. <laughs> um, it, and I agree with how you. About, how about sidewalks too? I I'm, I built two homes over there and I put sidewalks in, and then they go no, to to the north, it goes nowhere because there's there's no walkway in front of that uh, that guy's house and it stops. I mean, you know, you can put people to work. I, I get it. And you know what? <laughs> at, at some point, that was all like they changed the um, building codes at some point when homes were being built, whatever year that was. I've got the same thing in my neighborhood. I've got a brand new house next door to me. It's been there for probably 12 years. He's got a sidewalk that goes nowhere. You know, and I have, we have no sidewalks down our blocks at all. That kind of thing. So they're older neighborhoods. I get it. 
and like anything else in this well, world. Just since 2018. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But I appreciate you know bringing that to our attention though yeah. too. We'll take a look at. It. Thanks, Ryan. Mr. Waters. <coughs> I'm sorry. Could you sign in, please? There's a, a chart right here, Bob. There is a pen clipped on the top there too. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else wish to address the board? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wallers, for bringing that to our attention. I'll, I'll certainly I'll take a look at it tonight, even on the way home. Uh, standing committee reports. Finance committee, Trustee McLaughlin. First, I have a request for approval of payroll dated February 16th, 2018, totaling $442,764.96. Next, I have a request for approval of accounts payable dated February 19th, 2018. In recap, general fund, $459,118.68. Road and Bridge Fund, $15,108.47. Pulaski Corridor TIF, $1,369. Uh, property purchase for 11706 through 11710 South Pulaski, $482,597.55. Water and Sewer Fund, $849,652.16. And Heritage Two, $21,892.18. For a grand total, all funds of one million eight hundred and twenty nine thousand seven hundred thirty eight dollars and four cents. <coughs> and the next I have a request for approval of an ordinance of the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, approving the reservation of volume cap in connection with private activity bond issues and related matters. And Joe, can you please expand on that? Uh, hi, thank you. Ooh, <clears throat> what this is, and uh, I talked to Trustee McGrill uh, before and realized this didn't make the committee, so I, I understand that. I, I was preparing this ordinance along with probably 12 other ordinances for other uh, municipalities to the same effect, so I just kind of passed it on as, as I got it done. So there's, I have no rush with this. We can send it to committee, and I just wanted to be able to uh, explain it to you. What it is ultimately is there are uh, private construction jobs, typically industrial or housing, that qualify for the use of a issuer's tax-exempt bonding authority. This isn't you guys issuing bonds or anything like that. You're just given a set volume cap every year by the Office of the Governor. Um, and this year it was 105 times your population. So that equals the the 2,024,085 that's in the ordinance. And uh, basically if you don't reserve or use your volume cap by May 1, it's lost to the state of Illinois and they take it and use it for any projects they want to. So by reserving it, you um, have the authority A, to use it for a project within your own municipality or sell it to uh, another issuer so they can use, use it for a project. Um, over the last five or six years, it hasn't been very often that these bonds have been issued. It's been kind of a lull, uh, but I did receive a phone call about a project in Maywood, a housing project that may be interested in issuing like $19 million in bonds. And so they were looking at uh, seeing if any of my clients would be interested in selling their volume cap. I said, I would talk to them. I don't know what the price is going to be yet. Um, but I said, I would at least go forward with the reservation at this point so it doesn't get lost. So if you're not going to use it, you are going to lose it. So you might as well get some money for it is what it is basically what it boils down to. So. But at this any, time, all we're doing is we're holding on to it. And all saying, you're hey, doing right now it. is holding on to it. When, it come, when, when a confirmed project comes in, I will talk to you guys uh, about the price. Typically, now, I won't talk to about the price in open session here, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I can talk to you about that later. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Right. This is only reservation. If you want to pass it, though, I, I have no problem. It's just got to be done by May 1. Mm. That's all I have under finance, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, fire report, Trustee McLaurin? No report at this time. And so everyone know, knows the fire department had, where it was excused from t tonight's evening, they had no report here to, to answer to. Uh, the police report, Trustee McGrill? Um, I'm going to um, remove this um, ordinance and um, refer it to committee because it never went to committee um, for discussion. Um, and the police chief's not here to talk about it again. So I'm just going to refer it to committee, ordinance and legislation committee. That is letter J. Yes. And that's all that I have. I thought that one went. I thought that one was in committee. 
It didn't. Yeah, we didn't discuss that last week. I thought we did. It never went to committee. It, um, we asked, it was, um, never went to the Ordinance and Legislation Committee. And it wasn't brought up at a committee meeting for discussion, and then it was on um, the agenda last week. There was confusion, because I think the attorneys were asked to draw it up, and then there was like, where do we put this on the agenda? Under police, under ordinance and legislation, then they put it under police. But there was no discussion. I didn't know anything about it. I wanted to ask the chief more about it tonight. But um, well, I think part of the issue, too, is that it was on the agenda, but we didn't have it actually in our packets, I think. Yes, that's true, too. Erica sent it out after the fact, so we didn't That's right. get to review it right. actually at committee. All right. So. Um, anything else? No, that's all, Mayor. Uh, Public Work Committee and Boat Launch, Trustee Juarez. I have a request for approval of the January 2018 monthly activity report. Request for approval to go out for bid for contracted parkway tree pruning, approximately 850 trees with within the David Estates subdivision. I also have a letter from uh, Mike Freider. He wanted to inform us that the Illinois Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Forestry Services, in cooperation with the Arbor Day Foundation, has approved and awarded the Village of Elsip Tree City USA. This has been the fourth year in a row for this award. That's it. Okay, thank you. The Building Committee, Trustee Zelensky. I have a request for approval of the January 2018 monthly report. That's all for tonight. All right. The Water and Sewer Committee, Trustee Dozell. The request for approval to go out to bid for the pump station floor and foundation repairs. Uh, this matter had been discussed several times by uh, Commissioner Tribin and regards the repairing of the floor for that uh, pump station. He had passed out uh, pictures last time as well. That's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you. The License Committee, Trustee Juarez. I have a request for approval of a list of licenses dated January 29th through February 12th, 2018. That's all. Thank you. The Economic Development Committee, Trustee Pierce. Uh, request for approval of the January and February monthly activity reports. <clears throat> and <clears throat> a request for approval of ordinance of the Village of Alsip approving an agreement between the Village of Alsip and Code 102 LLC for the redevelopment of the property located at 12201 to 12217 South Pulaski Road, Village of Alsip, County of Cook, State of Illinois, in furtherance of the objectives of the redevelopment plan and project approved for the Pulaski Road Corridor TIF redevelopment project area. That's all, Mayor. All right, thank you. The uh, Planning and Zoning Committee, Trustee Zelensky. Uh, no report this evening. The uh, special committee reports, thank you. Uh, the special committee reports, Village Properties, Trustee McLaurin. No report. Thank you. The insurance committee, uh, Trustee McGrill. I have no report. Ordinance legislation, Trustee Pierce. No report, Mayor. IT, Trustee Delzell. No report. Human Resources, Trustee McGrill. No report. Uh, health and Pollution, Trustee Pierce. No report, Mayor. And traffic safety, Trustee uh, Dalzell. No report. Are there any presentations, petitions, or communications anyone wants to share? No. Uh, any, would anyone like to remove any of the items from the consent agenda? In summary, we've removed letter A. There is a correction to letter F on the minutes. We have hmm. removed letter J. I would like to remove B. B. B like boy? Yes. I'd like to remove an I. Which letter was it? N is in Nancy? I, I, I did. Oh, I. Right. Oh. I like Irene. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said N. Inside the packet that was distributed to the board, there was a lease agreement. Uh, but it doesn't show anywhere on the agenda. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying, Trustee. What under whose? It's under finance. Mm -hmm. or um, it's in relation to the EDCA property.
it would be on page 27 of the board packet. So, Trustee, are you saying that you're looking for something that's not, that's not shown here? I'm saying that inside the packet is distributed is the lease agreement, but it's not anywhere on our oh. consent agenda to discuss, authorize, or is it? I see what you're saying. Right, because. Well, I would, no, no, no. This, this would have been approved with the purchase of the property. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that would have been a part of the contract that you approved because it was contingent, frankly, upon. A, a us leasing it back, okay, right? Thank you. I don't know why it was in the. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, so we've got all those. Can I give a motion to establish a consent agenda? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Again, in summary, we have removed the letters A like apple, B like boy, I like indigo, and J like jump. Motion to establish the consent agenda as presented. Roll call number one. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dalzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLaughlin. Yes. Motion carries to establish. Can I get a motion then to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, roll call number two will be to approve the consent agenda as presented, filling in some information. Letter F is the approval of minutes of the December 4th, 2017 Village Board meeting with a correction to line number 77, removing the term boat launch. Letter G, approval of payroll dated February 16th, 2018, totaling $442,764.96. Letter H, approval to approval of accounts payable dated February 19th, 2018, totaling $1,829,738.04. Letter N would now be known as ordinance number 2018-2-3. Roll call number two to approve. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion to approve carries six to zero. All right, we'll return back to some of the items that were removed from the consent agenda. First one was letter B. Approval of the mayoral appointments as shown collectively. This is the T, uh, DEP Director Chuck Geraci, part-time building inspector John Justin, part-time electrical inspector Brian Larman, the fire chief Tom Szynski, the deputy fire chief Robert Ricker, the fire prevention officers Joe Schmidt and Doug Daniels, health inspector Linda Cavello, superintendent of streets Mike Freider, finance director Kent Olivan, IT uh, manager Brian Masari, the Superintendent of Water and Sewers, Dan Tribin, and the Water Department Foreman, Brian Drasic. Brian Drasic, I apologize. That was pulled by Trustee Juarez. Did you have a question? I just wanted to uh, table it for discussion at committee. And I also think that we need to, or we should um, divide and vote on each individually. You certainly can divide. Is that was that your motion? Do you want yes. do you want to separate? Yes. Okay. You don't have to do a motion. You can just ask. Which is there one particular you want off, or two, or more than one? Um, just. Or we can do them all individually as yes. well. It's it's up to the it's up to the village. Do all of these even require advice and consent? No. Um, we should remove those. And, you know, and I can tell you the. Um, these are well, actually, these all are mayoral appointed jobs. The. Um, and that all require advice and consent. I don't have the actual chart right in front of me right now, but these were all the jobs that typically you would, you know, there are appointments that with the advice and consent of the board, but that um, 
you know, if you were looking at a particular uh, individuals on here, we c I can confirm if, if it is an Amero appointment or not. I think what um, Trustee Juarez was saying was to um, bring it to committee next week so, and then make, make an separate it out so that we can discuss it. Make an individual appointment of each person and then they can vote on it or they can table it or they can do whatever they want. So you just make an appointment one by one and we'll go down the list and they can make their motions. Okay. Uh, it, with the advice of the, the attorney, um, we can do exactly that. We can actually go down the list mm -hmm. and... Um, appoint each individual on here uh, with a vote. Obviously, there will be a, a number of votes here. And should you get to an individual that you wish to table for a committee, um, we can actually do that. I would suggest that we no, table no, it till next week. They table an appointment. They get a vote, either yays or nays. There you go. I, I understand abstain. what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it is a yay or a nay. Right. Um, I was just, um, along with what Doc, um, Trustee Juarez was saying is that I think that it would be best to table this just till next week so that we can separate them out and separate them from the ones that need advice and consent and be able to discuss it because it wasn't on the con con uh, wasn't on the committee agenda last week again. So one more week wouldn't be it, bad. Well, it's not, it, a, it's not it's, a committee it's discussion. Not, right, it's not. A committee it's a mayoral discussion. appointment. Right. So but it's with I'd, the advice and consent of the board. Then I'd move to I'd move to recess for a few minutes so that we can get the chart out on what is a, a an advice and consent appointment and what's not because the, these are not all require a vote. That's, that's fine. I have no problem. Or what, what, I mean, whatever the the mayor wants. The mayor can hold it to the next meeting as well. It's up to him. Um, it would just I'd, clean it up a little bit. I, I'd rather no. I'd rather take just five minutes. I'd rather take a five minute recess on this to um, get uh, and I'm. That's fine. We can confirm which one is exactly. Like I said, these are all jobs within the village, mm -hmm. and um, we'll confirm which one is actually the is mayoral appointment or not. If it didn't need to be there, so be it. It's just that these are uh, jobs that are being held by uh, current personnel, and we didn't replace anybody. So I make a we're going to make a motion for a five minute recess. Yes, second. second. All in favor? Take more Aye. Than five Aye. Aye. All right. Five minute recess Fox, at yeah. 7.58 p.m. Right. <coughs> Can I, like, uh, let me, uh, are you going to stick around or? Yeah. Yeah, let me.
Okay, I'd like to call this meeting back to order at 808. Trustees, what I just handed you was basically what I had worked off originally, and just for the benefit of the public to so understand, there was a whole list of appointments. An appointment, too, as we got the students in the room, an appointment is basically just verifying who you want to represent you as, let's say, your attorney or, or your building commissioner or, and so forth, your health inspector, your police chief, and that. Some folks, through attrition, we had, let's say, like a, a fire chief early in the year retired, and when I uh, promoted a, a fire chief through attrition, a lot, of, a lot of the policemen moved up, so that was already taken care of. The balance of what wasn't appointed at the time was what you're looking at this evening. Just to be fair, and it was a good question, too, while, while I'm looking at a chart that the village historically has used to actually identify the job positions, very quickly, and thank you to our IT department, uh, we can actually, I was able to access this just to confirm which are actually mayoral appointments and which don't have to be. And according to our codification book, the DEP director, our director of emergency preparedness, that is a <laughs> mayoral appointment. The part-time personnel is not. I would just, basically, I'm just recognizing them as being our part-time personnel as far as uh, the electrical building and plumbing. Well, the plumbing inspector is not because we hired him earlier in our year yet, too. But the fire chief, yes, that is a mayoral, appoint mayoral appointment. The deputy fire chief is a mayoral appointment. The um, superintendent of streets, it's kind of weird, Mike. It's uh, designated by the trustees, you know, but yet... The superintendent of water and sewer is a mayoral appointment, yeah, too. So it's just in the language and whenever this it was okay, designated. The finance director is actually appointed by the mayor as well. So the only folks left on, in IT is actually a mayoral appointment as well, too. So going through your list here, and we can actually just put a line through. We can amend, obviously, what we're looking at that does not have to be a mayoral appointment would be the part-time building inspector, John Justin. The part-time electrical inspector, Brian Larman. The um, fire prevention officers, there was no designate on that. But they are on the list, Mayor. I know, they're on the list, but I'm saying it didn't say anything about a mayoral appointment. Oh, okay. So I'm going to strike that for now. Okay. The fire prevention officers? Yes. Okay. Is I, a lot of times, too, those are all qualified through the fire chief in order to know that they, well, they're qualified to do it, so. I mean, okay. Well, I know, and I agree with you, trustee. That's what I, that's what I worked off originally yet, too. But okay. not every not everything on that list requires advice and consent, so I think right. what we're just looking here is advice and consent. I'm going to also strike the health inspector at this time because although she's an inspector, we do have a licensed person that approves all of the any violations on her behalf, which is not on this list at this time. The superintendent of streets, as I said, that's a designated by trustees. I think I'll leave that on here because we're going to vote on that anyway. The finance director is a mayoral appointment. The IT direct uh, manager, Brian Massari, is a mayoral appointment. The superintendent of water and sewer is a mayoral appointment. And we're going to strike the water department foreman at the end of that, Brian Jurasic, because that would be obviously uh, Dan's promotion is what that is yet, too. So with that said, uh, I, um, Mr. Attorney, I, I think the way to do this, and we would ask for a vote on the DEP director, Chuck Geraci. You're making, a, you're Thank making you. a, make an appointment of Chuck Geraci as DEP director, and then. One second. I would like to uh, read into record that Trustee uh, McGreal had to leave for uh, business purposes, so she uh, stepped out at um, 8 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. So at this time, trustees, I'd like to make a motion to a. Uh, well, I need somebody to make the motion too, but I'd like to appoint DEP Director Chuck Geraci. So I need moved. a motion and a second. I'll second. Roll call number four to accept the appointment of DEP Director Chuck Geraci. Trustee McGreal is now absent. Trustee Dalzell? Yes. Trustee Pierce? Yes. Trustee Zielinski? Yes. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLawhorn? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next would be the appointment of Fire Chief Tom Stasinski. 
So moved. Second. Second. Roll call number five to accept the mayoral appointment of Fire Chief Tom Staczynski. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion carries to for the mayoral appointment of Fire Chief uh, Staczynski. Thank you. Next will be Deputy Fire Chief Robert Ricker. So moved. Second. Roll call number six to accept the mayoral appointment of Deputy Fire Chief Robert Ricker. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion carries to accept the mayoral appointment of Deputy Fire Chief Robert Ricker. Thank you. Next will be Superintendent of Streets Mike Freider. So moved. Second. Guys are talking too fast. I can't write that fast. <laughs> Roll call number seven to accept the mayoral appointment of Superintendent of Streets Mike Freighter. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zelinsky. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion carries to accept the mayoral appointment of Superintendent of Streets Mike Freighter. Thank you. Next will be Finance Director Kent Olivan. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Roll call number eight to accept the mayoral appointment of Finance Director Kent Olivan. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zelinsky. Abstain. Trustee Juarez. Abstain. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Yeah, I'll vote on that as Mayor well. Ryan. Yes. Motion carries to accept the finance, the mayoral appointment of finance director Kent Olivan. Thank you. Next will be the information technology manager Brian Masari. So moved. Second. Roll call number nine to accept the mayoral appointment of the information technology manager Brian Massari. Trustee McGrill is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion carries to accept the mayoral appointment of information technology manager Brian Massari. Okay. And lastly, we'll have Superintendent of Water and Sewer Dan Triven. So moved. Second. Roll call number 10 to accept the mayoral appointment of Superintendent of Water and Sewer, Dan Triben. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Motion carries to accept the mayoral appointment of Superintendent of Water and Sewer, Dan Triben. Thank you very much. And, again, thank you to the audience for being patient to understand what we are working with here. Uh, next, we had item I pulled from the agenda. This was approval of an ordinance of the Village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, approving the reservation of a volume cap in connection with private activity bond issues and related matters. That was pulled by Trustee McGreal. She stepped out. I, I really have no problem with you guys Waiting. going to committee with it to so get an opportunity to discuss it. So. I, I guess I'm looking at realistically, though, what are we going to discuss? Right. I mean, I, yeah. so at this point, I would like to make a motion to approve. Uh, could yeah. I just have a question or two about it? First of all, is it costing us anything? It's it, no, because you're going to get you're going to sell you're going to sell the volume cap if anything. So if it, we it, don't need it, I mean, if, if we decide if you don't we need, need it, it, then do we, we have already, any projects that reserved. can 
be useful for that, those funds? I, I don't know. I mean, it's really it's it's mostly businesses coming to you. They're they're a very unique type. When people come to us for the TIF. I mean, is there someone uh, that's we can we can look. I mean, we, we can look. It hasn't been most of the time. I'll be honest with you, Tristy. Uh, in the past, these businesses would be coming to you looking for um, your volume cap. It would typically not be us going out and trying to sell it. I mean, they, they get an opportunity to issue the bonds with a tax exempt rate. They're going to come to you. If nobody comes to us by May 1st and we sell it to another municipality, what do we get out of it? You get money. The value of what we sold it for. And what typically is that? I, I'd rather I'd rather talk to you one on one outside than, than to give away what I would recommend. But hey, let me put it this way. What you guys sell for will be the same exact rate everybody, uh, the, uh, all of my municipalities that I prepared this for, it'll be the same. Okay. Nobody's going to get a better deal than the other. So. Thank you. Yeah, this is just a reserve to, uh, <coughs> just a reserve on the number that... It, it's just that we never had a conversation about it. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Right. No, I, it, and it's my fault. I, 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 yeah. But since we, since it's, you don't have to do it till May, out of respect for Trustee McGrill, since she did have a lot of questions on it, I moved the table to the March 5th board meeting for a vote. We're not gonna a second. Vote, so. Okay. Do I need to call? Yeah, it was, it was a motion to the table. Okay. It never got seconded, actually. But that's oh, sorry. Uh, no, she no, – just did it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Roll call number 11 to table letter I, approval of an ordinance of the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, Approving the reservation of volume cap in connection with private activity bond issues and related matters. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell? Yes. Trustee Pierce? Yes. Trustee Zielinski? Yes. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLohorn? No. <laughs> Motion we carries to table. Why well, didn't I just? Very good. And then um, letter J. Uh, was removed for um, this was the approval of a, approval of an approval uh, here we go so an approval of an ordinance of the village of Elsip amending chapter 19 traffic and motor vehicles article 1 in general section 19-2 state law adopted of the Elsip municipal code and um, just for you McGrill best let's just be tabled and right. referred to ordinance legislation so I'd need a motion and a second if that's what the board wishes to do. I'll make the motion. Second. second. Roll call number 12 to table letter J, the approval of an ordinance of the village. No, of so it's referred to ordinance and legislation, not a table. Okay. Motion to refer. Okay, I, I had pulled to committee is what she had said on her, but yeah, I, I see. You wanted, to, you wanted to refer to the ordinance legislation yep. committee? Yes, okay. okay. Roll call number 12 to refer letter J, approval of an ordinance of the Village of Alsip amending Chapter 19, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 1 in general, Section 19-2, State Law Adopted of the Alsip Municipal Code to the Ordinance and Legislation Committee. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell? Yes. Trustee Pierce? Yes. Trustee Zielinski? Yes. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLawhorn? Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Um, next, any unfinished business? Any new business? Then I'd like to adjourn the closed session uh, to discuss litigation when in action against affecting or on behalf of the particular public body has been filed mm -hmm. and is pending before a court or of administrative, uh, administrative tribunal or when the public body finds that an action is probable or eminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 uh, letter C, number 11, requested by myself. I need a motion and a second. To, just for the record, there will also be a short discussion on collective bargaining matters as well. So. Okay. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Second.
What? Not, nothing. Did you need to read it into the minutes? Okay. We had a motion and a second. Correct. Right. We, we just, he just did. Oh, the collective bargaining one was different. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't have to cite the statutory section. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. he's fine. Roll call number 13 to adjourn to closed session to discuss litigation when an action against, affecting, or on behalf of the particular public body has been filed and is pending before a court of administrative tribunal or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed session meeting pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C11. Trustee McGreal is absent. Trustee Delzell. And collective bargaining. And collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sorry, Trustee Delzell. Yes. It's Cook County. I'll, I'll vote again. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Trustee Pierce. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee uh, Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLaughlin. Yes. Motion carries to adjourn to closed session. Thanks again, folks, for joining us this evening. Nothing else will be voted on. We're going to go into closed session in about five, ten minutes here. Thank you very much. Adjourn to closed session at 8.23 p.m. Yes. Girls. <laughs>